Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mutiara, and I would like to present my solution, a comprehensive agriculture training program for Southeast Asian countries while harmonizing their bilateral relationships, which addresses SDG 8.3, promoting development-oriented policies, SDG 2, achieving food security and promoting sustainable agriculture, SDG 8.6, reducing the proportion of youth not in unemployment or training, and lastly, SDG 17.7, .7, promoting the development to developing countries. Southeast Asian countries are major contributors of the agriculture sector as they account for 25.2% share of agriculture commodities globally. Agricultural sector plays a very important role as it accounts for 25% of country's GDP on average and agricultural land covers 116 million hectares in Southeast Asia. Ironically, ASEAN, or Association of Southeast Asian Nations countries, still import 74.8% of their food crops from non-ASEAN countries. Further researchers reveal that this is actually caused by a root problem, the low education and training system in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia has huge potential in agricultural sector, however, its productivity is not yet optimized. Currently, most farmers do not consider farming as a business that needs specific training. Moreover, most of them did not have the chance to enroll in a formal education beforehand. Hence, not only agricultural skills, but they are also lacking in business and managerial skills. Taking Indonesia as an example, 38 million people, or 15% of total population, works on this sector. However, most of them are still considered as smallholder farmers, who mostly use rudi rudimentary technologies, which inevitably lead to low yields. So my solution to tackle this problem is a comprehensive agriculture training program. This program is targeted to for the smallholder farmers in developing countries, as well as the unemployed people there. We would train them with both newly developed and agricultural techniques, such as organic farming, as well as business and entrepreneurial skills, hoping to be able to change their mindset from farming as a daily activity to fulfill their daily needs, to farming as a business that can be grown. This training program can be implemented in any agricultural country, as it can be easily reproduced in any countries, as we will recruit local agriculture graduates to be their trainees. This way, training will be specifically catered to their location and culture. Not only empowering them educationally, but our training program will also collaborate with local banks so that they will be more trusted, and therefore, loan and grant application for the farmers will be simplified as they have been trained with us and they can manage their financials better, avoiding debt problems with the banks. So probably, the question we all have in mind now is, how would a country with no or few agricultural land can take part or benefit from this training? Countries like Singapore, with very small land area, do not have the land resources for this training. But what Singapore and other countries with similar condition can do is to support the developing countries in terms of research and development on agricultural techniques as well as the manpower to train the trainers. Hence, we can have a standardized training curriculum. This way, both countries can establish a good relationship and create a greater impact beyond only one country, but one region, Southeast Asia, or even larger to the whole world. As a realistic solution, this training program has several barriers and hurdles. Some of our barriers include infrastructure constraints. This is because time and resources are spent on building infrastructures, such as irrigations and roads, before we can implement this program. To overcome this barrier, we will focus on areas with existing infrastructure first, before touching on areas without uh, sufficient infrastructure. Another barrier that we may face is resource constraint which includes difficulty in sourcing for funds and lack of credible human resources. Currently, we are very dependent on the NGOs and government for our revenue. Therefore, we will diversify our revenue streams to other possible sources. Also, without the credible human resource, our training program will lose its reputation. Thus, we will hold a very tight selection process and contract while also taking into consideration their teaching and training experience. To measure our solution, our key performance indicators are an increase in quantity and quality of crops produced, increase in farmer's profit, decrease in number of debt problems, increase in land productivity, and last but not the least, decrease in unemployment rate. 
So that's all for me, and thank you very much for your attention.